Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're taking a look at another of the cool Cisco iOS commands, and today's command is going to be the debug interface command. Right, if you've been listening to any of my series before, you know the spiel about doing debugs on production equipment. Make sure that you have the proper authorization, and also make sure that you're aware of how the debug is going to affect the operation of your device. Debugs tend to take up a lot of CPU cycles, so you don't want to be doing this in the middle of a day on a core router issuing a debug of damn near any kind, because it's going to eat up CPU. CPU cycles and it can affect production uh, equipment. If you accidentally type in debug all, you might as well just start clearing your desk right after you hit enter because it's going to lock up your device and you're going to need somebody to probably go to that device and power cycle it to break that out. But uh, again, you've been warned ad nauseum. So when you are doing this, if you've got the proper sign off, you've got a couple concerns. And the first thing is making sure that the debug does not clob the CPU of your device. That's outside the realm of this lesson, but that's what I just warned you about. The second thing is filtering the debug output so you can get to the information that you need to troubleshoot your issue. So when you're issuing debugs, you're going to get a lot of output generally. And in cases where you're debugging a protocol, that protocol might be running on a number of interfaces on your device. So, you know, in a lab, if you're uh, troubleshooting, let's say OSPF, it might be only running on a couple of interfaces and there's not much traffic there. But if you're on a production router, say a core router, you could have, you know, multiple interfaces, I mean, in, into the hundreds on some devices that are running that protocol. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to limit the output of your debug because otherwise you're just going to get a dump from every single interface and you're going to have to filter through that and even filtering through it you know you could say all right I'll just log it to the buffer and then I'll do a, a show log include that interface not all the output that you're looking for has the interface in it even that method is kind of hit and miss it's it's a little bit clumsy so there's a couple ways you could do this one way is with uh, limiting the debug to an interface, and that's what we're going to look at today. There's also the ability to do this by specifying an access list. That's going to give you a whole lot more granular look at what you know you're limiting your debugging to. And I go through that in a different lesson. So you know, basically limiting it to an interface is kind of the axe compared to the scalpel of the access list method. So debug is going to be a privileged exec command. So you're going to type in debug and then space. And if you invoke the Cisco iOS help with the question mark, you'll get a butt ton of output here for your different debugs. What we're looking for is interface. And unfortunately, if you look at the help here, it just says interface descriptor block, which tells you absolutely nothing about how this actually works. Even the command reference for debug interface is a little janky. It doesn't really get into a whole lot of detail of what it does. So what you'll do is you'll issue debug interface and you'll specify an interface. And then the output what you'll get is this condition one set uh, to see what you've just done or to verify you do a show debug and that'll tell you what the condition is so the condition one is limiting output of debug to fast zero slash zero and then at this point you can issue your debug command and when you're debugging in this case it's only going to give you output that's associated with interface fast zero slash zero and as you probably guessed from the one in the condition one set you can set multiple conditions so you could have multiple interfaces that you're doing debugging on it's going to limit the output to those interfaces we'll see that in an upcoming slide here. Okay, this ugly mess of a network uh, diagram is what we've got running. I've got Dynamips running in the background. We'll hit that when we hit the CLI, but you can see here that we have R1. Let's call R1 one of our core routers, and we've got two connections to each uh, of router two through four, so eight connections in total. They're all running OSPF in area zero. So now if we were to do a debug IP OSPF hellos on R1, we're going to get back a ton of information because we're going to get hellos from each of those eight interfaces, and we'll quickly get overwhelmed with information. So let's use our new debug interface tool to filter that just down to the interface or interfaces that we want to actually observe. Here we're issuing a debug IP OSPF hello on R1. Remember R1 has eight interfaces that are running OSPF. So this is without the debug interface condition being set. And you can see we get back a butt ton of information. We're getting stuff from fast 0 slash 0, 0 0 slash 2, fast 2 slash 0, blah 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 blah. So we're seeing all the hellos on all the different interfaces. You can see here we've been running this for about 18 to about six seconds here and we get all this so very quickly you're going to get a ton of information like i said you can parse through that either manually or start you know using some grips but it's a whole lot easier to use the debug interface command as we'll see in the next slide okay so we're on r1 again this time we just want to see the output that's specific to fast ethernet zero slash zero so we issue our debug interface f zero slash zero command we see that condition one is set if we were to issue a show debug at this point it would show us that we have this condition set to just show the stuff coming from F0 slash zero. So let's go ahead and run our debug. 
And now you can see when we run our debug, we're not getting output from any of the other interfaces. We're only getting stuff from fast zero slash zero. And you can see that they're highlighted in red here. And like I said, some of this stuff, mm, hello is not a big deal, but some of this stuff isn't stamped with the interface. So this end of hello processing it isn't stamped with the interface. Um, in this case, it's not a big deal, but depending on your debug, it might have more information and, and in particular, it might have information that you're actually looking for that is not stamped with the interface that it's being received on. So we issue our undebug all to stop all debugging. And so this command is very beneficial in this situation because we didn't get all the output from all of the other interfaces that are running OSPF. We just get the stuff that we want and then we can more easily troubleshoot our issues. And as I mentioned earlier, you can have multiple instances of the debug interface running. So in this case, we're on R1, and in this time, we want to see not only the debug output from fast 0 slash 0, but we also want the output from 0 0 slash 0. So what we do is we issue the debug interface fast 0 slash 0, followed by the debug interface 0 0 slash 0. And you see condition 1 and condition 2 are set. So now if we do a show debug, we can see that both of these conditions are set. And when we issue our debug, we're going to see output from both fast ethernet 0 slash 0 as well as 0 0 slash 0. So it's pretty cool because you can turn on as many interfaces as you like and just debug those. The thing to keep in mind though, and we'll see this in the next slide, is when you're issuing a U all, which is short for undebug all, it's turning off all the debugging. It does not clear these conditions. And this is pretty important because if you set these conditions up and going back to our instance of R1 having eight different connections, and you don't clear this out, you know, and a couple months later, another engineer gets on there like, oh man, I got to debug uh, OSPF hellos on interface 0 zero slash 1. He goes and issues the debug IP OSPF hello, and all he gets is output from fast 0 slash 0 and 0 zero slash 0. And he's like, well, wait a second, you know, the interface that I'm looking for isn't even processing hellos. What's going on here? If hopefully he would do a show debug and see the conditions here. But if you don't clear these, they stay set. And this is showing that it, when we issue the undebug all, we turn off all debugging. But now if we do the show debug, we can still see that condition one is set in this case. So to remove this, you just issue the no debug interface and then specify the interface. And it'll give you this paragraph here saying blah, 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 bad things, whatever. Just go ahead and hit yes to remove it. And only do that on the last condition. So like in the last slide, if we had multiple interfaces that were set, dev condition one and two, if we remove one of those, it's not going to give this. It's just going to go ahead and take it out and you'd only have one condition set. When you're down to the last condition, it will give you this little spiel here, and then you could decide whether you want to remove it or not. But cleaning up after yourself is going to be pretty important in this case because you might catch somebody off guard, you know, months later when they're doing some troubleshooting using uh, debugs and you've got the condition set to only specific interfaces. All right, let's get some uh, hot CLI action cooking here. So I'm on R1, and this is the same setup that I showed in that diagram. If I do a show IP interface brief, and I'm just going to show the interfaces. I've got IP addresses assigned. You can see we have a bunch of interfaces is here to show IP OSPF neighbor. We've got a bunch of neighbors and basically take a look at this. We've got two neighbor connections for each neighbor. We've got one that's going to be on an ethernet connection and then one that's going to be on a serial connection. So if we go ahead and say, oh, we've got an issue. Let's debug. Well, first let's do a show debug. Make sure I didn't leave anything on here. I didn't. Okay. So now if we do a debug IP OSPF hellos, I hit enter. We're going to get hit with a bunch of stuff here. And tick tock, baby. There you go. Give it a little bit more here. I'm going to issue my you all. Let's say in our case that we have a problem with this connection, this one to uh, R2 on fast zero slash zero. We're getting all this output from the debug that really doesn't concern us. We got stuff from zero zero slash three, zero slash one. You know, we just want these zero slash zero stuff. So if we have it logged, probably got a butt ton of stuff in the log because I don't think I cleared it. Yeah, I do, but you could do a show log, include net zero slash zero just to get all the stuff that specifies fast ethernet zero slash zero and that might be sufficient for what you're doing but like I said with some debugs it's going to give you output that doesn't have this in the isn't stamped with the interface and so let's go ahead and limit our debug just to fast ethernet zero slash zero and the way we're going to do that is with the debug well, let's invoke the iOS help with a question mark and you'll see yeah there's a ton of stuff Interface, interface descriptor block. Doesn't tell you a lot here, so let's break out of this. And we're gonna debug interface, and we're gonna make it fast zero slash zero. You can see it gave us that condition one set. So now if we do a show debug, we should see our condition, and it is on fast ethernet zero slash zero. So I'm just gonna up arrow to get my debug, and we might have to wait up to 10 seconds on this. Let's wait for a second, hello. I'll pause the video, because I don't know any jokes. Good enough, all right. So now you can see this time, rather than getting output from all the interfaces, we're only getting stuff from fast zero slash zero. So now 
let's say that we wanted to include 0, 0, slash 0 into the mix. We can do the same thing. 0, and it says condition 2 set. Let's have fun and make it three of these guys. Woo, three condition set. So again, if you do your show debug, you'll see that we're only going to be outputting debug information for these three interfaces. So now if we go ahead and up arrow and hit our hellos, or hit our debugged for our hellos, we'll see some hellos here. So you can see the output was from fast ethernet zero, 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 zero and zero, zero, slash one. So those are our three dogs right there. So now we do an undebug all and we log off and we're done for the day, right? Yeah, not really because we do a show debug. Even though we've disabled all debugging, we still have these conditions set. So if we want to remove these, we actually have to go no debug int f0 slash zero. And you can see here it took condition one away. So now if we do the show debug, we only got condition two and three. We're doing s0 slash zero. Same thing, now we only have condition three. When you remove the last one, it's gonna give you this spiel here. Uh, this condition is the last interface condition set. Removing all conditions may cause a flooding of debugging messages to result. And actually this is good because what this would do is if you were actually in the process of debugging, it's not gonna affect us now because we're not debugging. Let's go no. Now let's go ahead and debug our hellos. Just show you this in action. So we're debugging our hellos. We should only be seeing stuff on zero, zero, slash one. So now if I go ahead and remove that condition and I say yes, there we go. See, now we start getting stuff from all the interfaces. So it, it actually is pretty good to read through this, but it's really only going to affect you if you actively have debugging running. Like I said, cleanup is great. One of the other things, you, you know, always clean up your debugs. Always issue the you all to stop all debugs or your specific debug but you can see here that if you're filtering only on a particular interface and you're doing a debug the output wouldn't be a ton so you might just log off and forget about it so then when somebody comes by to clean this out if they go ahead and uh, remove this they could get hit with a ton of stuff and it might you know bring your router down Anywho, that's it in a nutshell here. It's actually a really good command. It's very good for troubleshooting, especially when you're going to be running debugs because you want to just debug on only the stuff that you need to look at rather than, you know, wasting a bunch of CPU cycles by debugging everything on the router. So just a summary, when you're debugging, you've got a couple concerns. You don't want the debug to knock out the CPU of your device. So you want to make sure that you know what a debug is going to do before you apply it. And the second thing is that you're going to get a ton of output generally, and you want to filter that debug output so you can get to the crux of your problem so you can get your troubleshooting done faster and more accurately. So now the debug interface is going to help you with that second issue because what it's going to do is it's going to limit debug output to specific interface or interfaces. You can specify a single interface or multiple interfaces. We saw this on the slides as well as on the CLI. And one thing to keep in mind is that when you're done with your debugging, make sure you go through and remove the conditions Otherwise, they will stay there even though the debugging has been turned off. This is really a good command to have in your iOS troubleshooting toolbox. And as always, I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.